What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Ace Metaphor. Let me take my glasses off. Listen, all right. I know the other, um, the other episode, episode one, I was like trying to figure out what we was going to call our little intimate time, our little personal time here. And I decided it ain't going to be Metaphoric Monday. It's going to be the Ace of Hearts podcast because I just like the word Ace of Hearts. Um, and so this is officially episode two. So make sure you tune in. If you're watching on um, YouTube, comment below, hit the subscribe button. I'm about to invite our Facebook, um, our Instagram audience in here real quick. Um, but today has been a good day. As you can tell, the first episode, oh, let me put this back on. The first episode, I ain't have a haircut. And um, let me tell you something. I'm sliced up right now. People was talking about my haircut the other time, so you know, whatever the case may be, I'm sliced up. Y'all don't be caring about my self esteem, y'all just be making fun of me. But it's good, it's good, it's good. So, anyway, I'm inviting the Instagram audience in right now. Um, so we're gonna say hi, say hi, YouTube. Instagram, what's going on now? I know I did a podcast section yesterday, okay, and y'all like it's supposed to be weekly. This is weekly for them. Okay, but this is just a day in regular time. So I want y'all to sign in. Say Instagram, say hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at Ace Metaphor if you want to. I'm looking at myself instead of looking at the camera. I still got to learn this. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down some more questions. All right, so y'all, what's up, toodles? How y'all doing? Y'all can drop questions below, too. I'm going to pull from the, um, <clears throat> oh, our first question. Whew, let me turn this off. So the first question on the Ace of Hearts podcast is, is a cheat always a cheat? Damn. Duh. Woo. We just going to start early. Okay. First of all, if you've ever been cheated on before, let me raise your hand. Raise your hand. Look around. Everybody raising their hand. Cheating is something, unfortunately, that's like part of relationships, especially when they're not healthy or toxic. Are you with somebody that hasn't learned self-control? There's always going to be an issue with somebody that hasn't uh, hasn't learned how to um, be have self-control, that doesn't have integrity, that don't know how to be faithful. Here's the thing. Somebody cheating has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. So is a cheat always a cheat? Yes. Unless they change themselves internally. Most people don't do that, though, because they want to make sure they want to make it seem like cheating has something to do with who they were with. Nobody wanted to be their fault and shit. Have you ever met somebody that got issues, but it's always somebody else's fault? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's never them. And that type of person will never see the need to grow because they don't have self-awareness. What I want everybody to do right now is work on your self-awareness. Because when you know where you're deficient, you know where you need to heal at. You know where some attention needs to be. And here's the thing. Time doesn't change cheaters. Being out of a relationship doesn't change cheaters. It takes a cheater to realize and look themselves in the mirror and get to the core reason as to why cheating was happening. Let me tell you something. Cheating is a symptom. It's a symptom. It is not the problem. It's a simper of a, of a deeper thing going on with that individual. So right now you're in a relationship with a cheater and you think some time is going to fix that shit. No, sometimes it's some unhealed scars from a misguided childhood. Sometimes it's an unhealthy view of sexuality that can be initiated for the overuse or um, over importance of pornography in their life. Um, sometimes it is a undisciplined man or woman that can't say no for whatever reason. Those are the things that need to be addressed. So is a cheater always a cheater? I would say yes, unless they are willing to do the work to remake their character, to rebuild their morals and their integrity. You don't think people feel like fucking like let's be real with you. I don't care if you've been married and you love that person you with with all your heart. There will always be temptation there. There will be times where you may want or think or fantasize about another person. Quit lying to me, y'all. Listen, if you've been having sex with the same person for multiple years, you cannot sit here and lie. And pretend like you ain't close your eyes and imagine the rock giving you that rock. All right. Or Chris Brown or some shit. Be for real. You know what to 
And ladies, y'all be closing y'all eyes doing sex, so I know y'all be thinking about other men, but that's not important. Those those thoughts and those, I mean, everybody has eyes. You can walk down the street and see somebody that you think is attractive and have an impure throat. But the difference between people that, you know, go through it and the people that don't is, A, you don't let those ideas fester. Maybe you have a thought of, damn, what I wouldn't do to her. But then you're like, nah, I got a family at home. Now nah, I love my wife. And you replace those negative, unhealthy thoughts with positive ones. It's too many people, though, that harper and allow that seed to grow into sin. And that's what we got to do because it all starts within our minds. So I would say this. I don't think always a cheater. I don't think cheaters can never change. But I don't think not doing anything about your cheating spirit means that you're not going to be a cheater no more. I don't think just because your girl broken up with you for cheating mean that you done changed. I think it's just something that people have to get some real help with um, and, and rediscover things, man. But, yeah, I do. I do feel like that y'all be lying to us. You know what I'm saying? I do feel like you be you be thinking about Shamar Moore's ass when I'm giving you that dick. It's OK. Do what you do, because I'll be thinking about other people, too. Y'all, y'all ain't the only people that be fantasizing about other people. And you a damn lie if you tell me you ain't never thought about somebody else while you was having sex. Don't be lying to me, fam. Do not do that. Let me see. Let me see what Instagram. Somebody said definitely. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going I'm to pick another question. Um, uh, let's see. I only got a couple questions today. Let's see. Somebody asked, how can you tell if a boy is interested in you? Well, I mean, she. Whew. That's a toughie. That's a toughie. You know why? Because I'm a man. I, I, I wouldn't know how a man would. Here, here's the thing. I, man, I don't give a fuck about interest. I don't. I don't care about whether or not you are interested in me. That don't get me excited no more. I'm 30. I'm grown. Your little like does nothing for me. I don't care if you like me or not or interested in me or not. Now, all that matters not. I don't get excited just because we went on a date. I don't get excited because we went on three dates. It's been too many times I've been in these little situationships or these little start and stops and I'm getting my hopes up and I've learned to wait until serious shit happen. Okay? Like, you know, you liking me doesn't do anything for me. I can't wait for you to say you love me. You're interested in marrying me. When y'all say, is he interested in me or not, for what? Yeah, obviously, if he's talking to you, he has some interest. But what type of interest is it? Is it, I'm interested in fucking? Interested in wasting your time? Interested in having you in my life because I know you're weak mentally and you can't protect yourself and you got tolerance and endurance and you're going to let me run all over you? Some people are interested in you, yes, but interested in what? That's the most, that's the question you need to know. Somebody hit you, I'm interested in you. Interested for what reason? I'm not excited until I know you are interested in being my wife. Not a wife, my wife. You have learned me in and out. You know my character. You know where I'm good at, what I'm not so good at. And now we are being able to say, you know what? I can take you seriously and you take me seriously. Before the end, man, man, I ain't getting excited just because we went on a date. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm grown, man. I'm grown. So, in conclusion, there are people in this world that will like you. But you got to ask yourself, what do they like about me? Too many times we attribute it to positive qualities. Oh, they must like how successful I am. No, he likes how you don't stand up for yourself. And how you have such a given heart to your detriment. Oh, he likes the way that you hang on to his every word and not his every action. Oh, he likes the way that you just believe everything he says. Sometimes the things he likes about you are the unfavorable things you need to fix. But no, you, you fail to realize that because you want to believe that he likes you for a positive reason. 
when it's really just a self-serving reason for him. There's a lot of people in relationships only because, look, fuck boy, let me, let me tell you this. We always talk about fuck boys or people that's going to waste your time. Let me tell you something. As a man, if I know you got high standards and high morals and you can defend that shit, I'm not even going to waste my time trying to talk to you because all I know I want to do is fuck. So why would I go after the girl that seemed like she got high self-esteem? That's a, that's a bad fucking idea. But here, here a woman to be, or a man in a similar situation, to be like, oh, he must really like me. He must really, really want to be with me. No, he just wants your draws and you just easier than her. You know what I'm saying? You, you want to catch my drift here? So it works as a catch-22. There are women who are high standard, high quality, and they feel like they intimidate guys and they have a smaller pool because guys don't want to work for them. Oh, but they, 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 they won't chew because here you are getting geeked just because they're interested. And now because you want them to like you even more, you end up giving things before they earned it, like your body and that ass, kids, loyalty and shit, being a wife to a, to a boyfriend simply because you want him to like your ass. And I think that this is a tie to some, some unresolved childhood shit. Sometimes you just seek validation from the opposite sex. Your self-worth isn't enough for you. So you're willing to sacrifice whatever you can just to get the validation from some random ass man. That shit gotta stop, in my opinion. I don't even know what the question is no more. What is it? How do you tell if a boy is interested in you? Oh, we done, <laughs> we done. I done got off track, y'all. Instagram, I'm sorry. I got off track, but uh, I don't give a fuck about interest, man. I need you to stop caring about whether or not somebody is interested in you. Interested ain't paying no bills. Interested ain't making it to a lifetime of love. Interested ain't going to put food on the table. Interested ain't, you can't get kids from interested. You know what I'm saying? Interested and soulmate is two different things. I don't care if you're interested in me if I don't know the reason why you're interested in me. And you need to start asking that man why he's interested in you. Because trust me. It's too many of y'all to be on my comment section talking about, ah, I was in a relationship with a narcissist and why did he like your ass? You think that narcissist is going to go after the hard, hard working, dedicated woman that got her morals in her head on straight and know how to defend it and ain't going to take no bullshit from nobody? Hell no. He ain't going after that girl. It's too much work. And she ain't having that shit. He went after you. Yo ass, and you don't want to know why. I was in a relationship with a narcissist and, and why? What's inside of you that was okay with that, that accepted that? You don't think that woman attracts narcissists too? She's got enough sense to say bye when she see the, the hints. You didn't, you married his ass. You married him. But the, but, but, the, but, the, the, but, the, but they good at, but the, but the, nah, I don't even, this is the Ace of Hearts podcast, we ain't doing, but the, but the, but the, but the, but the, I don't want to hear it. But, but the, but, 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 I don't want to hear it, all right? I do not want to hear it. I need you to up your protection systems. Quit. Negotiating with bullshit. That's exactly what you do. You say, I'm worth this, and you accept bullshit, and you try to make it into a relationship. That's what you do. You try to build a bay, build a boo. You want a project bay. You think you can fix and grow a man. It's, it's funny how the fuck boys are always attracted to mommy types. Oh, always attracted to mommy types. Some of y'all are mommy types. I get it. You're a woman. You're a nurturer. You're a giver. You're a home builder. You raise children. And so naturally you think, I can raise this fuck boy to a man. Oh, yeah. 
there it is. That's it, right? It's almost like when you think about it, I used to say in my videos all the time, and I truly believe it, a great woman can make a man twice as good as he already is. Keyword, already is. For example, you know multiplication, let's take it. Two times two is what? Four. Times two is ass. But what's zero times two? Two. So what's zero times two? Zero. That's the thing. When you take fuckboy and it's zero ass nature, no real overwhelming qualities, bringing nothing to the table, and you think you can make more out of him, what you end up doing is losing the two you had. You lose your peace of mind, you lose sleep, hair, weight, because you're stressed out, you lose happiness, an intact heart, you lose your clean STD test. <laughs> well, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you'd have had a good streak until him, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you lose, what, $24 with insurance because you have to pay for the chlamydia medicine? You lose a lot of shit when you try to multiply your times two with a zero. But I get it. Just like a mother never wants to give up on her kids, sometimes the mother types never want to give up on the fuck boy. I said it. You feel guilty because you feel like he needs you to grow. Like he your damn kid or something. Motherfucker dropping you off at work and shit. Driving your car around the city and shit. Laying on your couch. These are things that you gotta understand that there's, there's that natural need for you to maybe take care of somebody and this man to pick someone that's gonna take care of him to her detriment. Let me tell you something. When you have children, it's a pretty one-sided relationship with them, your kids. Think about it. Like, think about it. You, 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 your kids don't say thank you. <laughs> thank you, mommy, for paying the light bill. They don't appreciate shit. Cause mentally, they're not able to process everything you are doing for them. Fuck. Boys are not mentally able to process everything you are bringing to the table. They don't understand it. They can't equate it. They don't see how it values them. Adolescents, they got an adolescent mind. But yet, the mother type, willing to more tolerant to put up with it. If you raise a, ch a child, you, you okay. It can be all kind of noise around the house. You can watch your favorite show. I ain't got kids. Let me tell you something. If I'm over somebody's house and it's a TV show on and shit, and they, the kids running the fuck around, I can't concentrate. I, moms, I don't see how y'all do it. I'm going to have to tell the kids, shut the fuck up. I'm watching TV. Sit down. Quit talking. It'd be too. Y'all can tune it out. Just like you tune out the bullshit from that fuck boy. You be seeing the text messages from those people that want to talk to you woman to woman. You be seeing it, but you tune it out. You be seeing all the red flags, but you tune it out. You be hearing all the complaining and the lies from his mouth, but you tune it out. Because you are so used to doing that. So, to, to, to go full circle here, I don't want to say to you that, you know, it's your fault for attracting this fuckboy. But what I am saying is, you have to understand that there are things within yourself that can change your dating outlook. And that's what everybody involved, and I'm gonna I'm let this be known with everybody watching. If you are not happy with the pool of people that are currently interested in you, do one of two things, three things. First of all, first of all, change your routine. Some of y'all do the same shit every day. Let me tell you what you do, go to work, you go to this one gym, you go to that one church, you go to that one bar. And that's the, f you live in a big ass city and you can count on your hand the many different places you've been this week. And you be talking about, it ain't no men in LA. It ain't no men in Atlanta. Well, you just stay in the same zip code. You don't do, you don't change your routine. You go to the same grocery store, you go to the same mall. Change your routine and you will see that you meet different people. Two, be more sociable. Some of y'all be looking mean as fuck at the bar and shit. Ask somebody how their day was. 
at the, you know, you can, it ain't like you're trying to holler at him, but just being more social in general, you'll create more interactions. Number three, sometimes you got to change your energy. You know what I mean? You got to change how do you carry yourself. It has nothing to do with your physical appearance. It has everything to do with your self-confidence. It's almost like self-confidence is attractive. Have you ever met somebody, a guy, <clears throat> he decent looking, but the way he carry himself, his swag, the way he smell, just make shit just hit. Same is true for you. Like the way you carry yourself, the, the way you hold your head high, that, that, that attracts the right type of people and repels the wrong type of people. I'm telling you, there's men in this world that prey on low self-esteem. And I can tell you this from being a man. It's in, it's in my new book. You guys, y if you ain't came on tour, you ain't got it. But I said, like, it was a point in time where that's what I searched out. When I was at the club, you was looking for the girl that didn't get talked too much. Looking with the girl in the corner that looked like she ain't have no kind of self-esteem and shit. Because that just was an easy picking. Like, not everybody in the dating field is out here looking for a wife. Sometimes they're just looking for a fuck. And I would say that that's the vast majority of the people. So typically, you want to find somebody that makes that as easy of a process as possible. Okay? So I don't know if I answered the question or not. Did I answer the question? I don't know if I answered the question, but that's my answer to the question. Okay? I don't know. I, I don't know if I... Instagram, I'm sorry if I answer your question. All right? But the shit, I, I'm trying to be honest here. Okay? <laughs> I'm just trying to be honest here. All right. So we're going back to the ground. We're going to get our question. Like, if you're watching right now, we got, ooh, if you're watching right now, all right, so if you want to be able to ask me a question on and get it answered on this podcast, the Ace of Hearts podcast, that's what we calling this shit, what I need you to do is I need you to follow me on Instagram, at Ace Metaphor, and when I put a question tab on my stories, then you pop your question. There's only a few of them, so I'll be able to get to them, okay? Um... Ooh, oh, 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 somebody just asked a good-ass question. All right. All right. Somebody said, how do guys fake their feelings for so long? Ooh, oh, 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 oh. It ain't so long. It's normally after they've gotten what they wanted from you. Ha, ah, that's what it is. It's not faking your feelings. It's earning what you wanted. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like they're pretending per se. They're, they're trying to exchange effort into what they want. That's why I said it's important for you to understand what somebody's intentions. It's not enough for them to be interested. You want to know what they're interested in. Because trust me, all that effort it took to get that ass was real. It's just the motivation leave once they get it. Got the ass. I don't got motivation to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not like they fake their feelings. They're not faking their feelings to be in a relationship with you. People don't fake feelings for real ass goals, lifelong goals. They fake it for short term things. You see what I'm saying? Quote unquote fake. So my stance with it is sometimes we have to recondition our minds to look at runners different. For example, you got sprinters and maritime runners. Sprinters be sexy as fuck, don't they? Big thighs and shit, muscular motherfuckers, they be up there just running and shit all sexy and shit. You like, oh look at that sprinter. You know what I'm saying? But they can only go hundred meters. You know, the marathon guys be the, you know the guys, y'all know they from Africa. You feel me? Because they be fucking them up. You know, shout out to the motherland. They be fucking them up in Africa, right? They be like, you know, skinny, look like they could probably eat a little bit more, but them, they, they running, they running, running, 25, 30 meters, right? They, they, I mean, not meters, but they running 25 miles. Y'all don't even know, they just running, running. They run for days. And here's the thing. A lot of times we are attracted to sprinter qualities in relationships. People that start off fast. People that look a little bit more appealing and attractive. And so what we end up doing is choosing the sprinter over the marathon runner. Because guess what? The marathon runner going to start off slow. That person ain't going to be texting you every single day. It's a marathon. 
His goal is a lifetime of love. We got time. I can ration this. I got to conserve my energy. The sprinter don't got nothing to give a fuck because his goal, his end goal is shorter. The sprinter wants to sprint to sex. That's about this far apart. Whereas the marathon runner wants to run to a lifetime of love. But no, no, nobody wants the marathon runner. Nobody wants the safe guy. The one that's just concerned about, you know, your well-being and just there, want to be your friend at first, want to take it slow. Nah. So here's the thing. That guy didn't fake his funk. You just misinterpreted his actions. He had his goal in mind. He had very real, <laughs> real intentions for that ass. And he was going to do what was required to get that ass. Everything he did in order to get the ass was real. The, the, the how was your days, the, the, the let me take you out, the let me buy you this Gucci purse. Or hopefully y'all getting purses now. Do y'all still get purses for fucking? I don't know. Do you get a purse? Hopefully you get a purse if you fucking, you know, let's get a purse. Um, all that shit, that's real. That's real. But the goal was short. So after he reached the finish line, do a sprinter sprint after they, they reach the finish line. Have you ever seen a sprinter when they reach the finish line? They be tired. <sighs> they be like, <sighs> ah, ah, da, woo. Ah, boo! Because all they have trained to do was run a hundred miles. I mean, a hundred meters. There are people that live today that all they've trained to do was court a girl until they have sex, or court a girl until they get a void filled within their body. That can be loneliness. That can be some in, uh, a lack of intimacy. That can be um, uh, they need a mommy figure. And once they get filled, they're tired. They don't have any more to offer. Their motivation to run isn't there. They haven't practiced for a full relationship. They fucked all their life. So they know they got the stamina to get to the fucking, but they don't know if they got the stamina to last afterwards. That's even with guys that are genuinely interested in you. Some people want a lifetime relationship. They ain't got the cardiovascular endurance to do so because they haven't trained themselves for the long haul. So what I'm saying is, Women, ladies, you have to recondition your mind to not only think the sprinter's bodies and the sprinter's qualities are attractive, but also think and view the marathon runners as being attractive too. Don't misinterpret somebody hitting you up every single day of the week, meaning that they're more interested in you. Because they may be, but just in the ass. Sometimes you give more credit to that guy because he seems more interested than the guy that's just hitting you up here and there. When that here and there guy is thinking about the long run, and keeping a relationship in proper perspective because he's used to running marathons and not sprints. That's my two cents about it. Y'all can take it or leave it. It's up to y'all. I, I mean, if y'all want to take it. So anyway, <clears throat> podcast people, say what up to Instagram people. Instagram people, say what up to the podcast people. Um, I love you guys, and we're going to try to do this once a day so I can get a whole bunch of podcast episodes built up because <laughs> I'll be touring and I'll be busy. So um, when I'm at home, I'm going to do these during the day, all right? I love you guys. For my podcast people, if you liked anything you heard, make sure you go to acemetaphor.shop and you can get any one of my books and our shirts. I got affirmation shirts for your ass. Um, secondly, I'm coming to a city near you. You can go to acemetaphor.com slash tour. If you want a tour ticket, I will put the links below. But most importantly, make sure you come back here and you watch me. Um, you follow me on Instagram at Ace Metaphor so I can, um, I can answer your questions. And we're going to try to do this. You feel me? We're going we to try to do this. All right. So I love you guys there. And I love you guys there. I will talk to both of y'all later. Peace.